Hello there. I'm going to take a different route this week and do some beading. I'll show you how to make a spiral rope necklace out of seed beads. And I'm going to make a necklace for this carnelian pendant, which I did not make. I acquired some prefabricated pendants and seed beads to be honest. And I'm going to make a necklace for this beautiful carnelian pendant. Did you know carnelian happens to be an alternative birthstone for July? Besides ruby, carnelian is also a July birthstone. So if you want to see how I made this, just stay tuned and I'll show you how. Okay, so I have everything laid out. I have my chosen seed beads, a needle, my pendant. I have some fire line in the crystal color. There's also wildfire, pretty much the same thing. And I just pull some out, arm's length, might be like three feet here. Something manageable, nothing too crazy because you can end up with tangles. This is a bead mat that I'm working off of. Let's thread our needle. That can be tricky in itself. All right. So with this stitch, an inner spiral and an outer spiral. The outer spiral, you're gonna be using a lot more beads in the inner spiral, so that's why this pile is bigger. I'm gonna use this as the outer color. But to start it off, you're gonna load four of your inner color, one, two, three, four, and three of your outer color. Each row of your outer color will contain three beads. And by the way, these are size 11 -0. It's my favorite size. And I'm gonna bring those down to about six inches away from the end. You don't need a stopper because once we do our stitch, it's gonna keep those beads in place. But I need to leave some length so I can show you how I finish off the necklace. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna feed your needle through the four inner colors, the four inner beads and pull that through and tighten that up. Pull it down so I'm back to the six inches. Okay, and then I gotta tighten it. This is what it should look like. You have your four inner color and three of your outer color. And what you're gonna do now until you're finished with your necklace is you're gonna feed on one inner color and three outer colors. Bring these beads down to the rest of them, just like that. Make sure there's nothing around you for your thread to grab onto. And now you're gonna take your needle and you're gonna feed it through three previous beads, inner beads and the new bead and pull that through. And then you're gonna seat that row of beads right next to your previous row of beads. It's gonna be to the right of it. And it's gonna be a little bit higher. It will eventually spiral around the middle spiral. And once you get going, you'll see the pattern take shape. So grab one inner color, three outer color, Bring them down. Take your needle. Come up through three previous beads and the new bead. Pull that through and lay that line right next to the previous one. Grab one inner color, three outer color. Bring them down, down and go through three previous inner beads and the new one. Make sure you check after each pass that things are laying okay, but you can kind of see how the spiral is taking shape. Grab one inner, three outers, Bring it down, 
find your top four inner colors. And bring it up. Lay that line right next to your previous one and keep going. You'll develop a rhythm eventually and then this will go a lot faster for you. One, two, three, four. One middle. Three outers, one, two, three, four. Go up the top four. And snug that guy next to your previous guy. Make sure everybody's nice and tight. Keep on going. You can clearly see the spiral taking place. I don't need to bore you with me creating the 16 inch necklace. When I run out of thread, I'll be back to show you how to incorporate a new piece of thread. Stay tuned for that. This is two lengths of thread. My first taping of me connecting a length of thread, I don't know, stopped recording for some reason. This is two lengths, it's nine inches. And I've got, what, six inches? When it gets to about six inches, it's hard to sew, so it's time to add a new thread. So let me grab my thread, get another wingspan full, and I'm gonna tie them together. And I'm not sure about names of knots. Maybe this is a surgeon's knot. I'm not sure. I go about four times around. I kind of feel like I'm tying on a fishing lure or something. So I did four times around and then I'm going to come up above and do another four. I use tools. And squeeze it closed. Not too tight yet, but I have these two ends. Grab a lighter, and I'm just gonna touch the ends to the flame. It makes two little bald ends there, and then I just pull. Pull both sides, and I have this nice little knot here. It's pretty strong. Let me bring my beads back. Thread my needle again. Just show you how easy it is to get the beads past the knot. There's the knot right there. Just slides right past. And 
That wasn't too hard to get through. I haven't had them break on me yet, so that's good. Makes a pretty strong knot. Okay, I've got a little ways to go. I am also gonna feed on my pendant here. So I don't have to feed it through like all that chain. I'll just put it on now. Okay, I went through another length now and I'm at 13 inches. I just need one more length. Ball them up, pull them tight. All right, I'll get through these last few inches and I'll be back in a bit. My necklace is finished. It's about 16 inches or so. All I need to do is finish it off. How I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna use these little bead end caps. They got a hole through them. Actually, I need a couple seed beads as well. Just happen to have a couple laying around. But I got about five, six inches of line on either end here. I'm gonna bead on my bead end. To keep it stable, I'm gonna bring my line through once so it'll help me keep it cinched down next to my beads and now i'm going to do the same with a seed bead feed that through a seed bead feed it through again bring the seed bead and seed it all the way down here I'm going to use some pliers for this. Bring that seed bead all the way down. And to make it easier, I'm going to put my needle back on because I'm going to feed this thread around my bead and bead end to secure it. The needle will make it easier. Hopefully it's not too long. So I'm going to go down underneath the bead end, go underneath and up through the seed bead again. Bring that, my thread up one side. I'm going to go along the other side and do the same thing. Come up through the seed bead. And I'm just going to keep on doing that. Till my needle falls off or I run out of room. Oops. So my needle fell off. I'm going to pull on it, make sure it's nice and snug. And cut that short. And do the same with this side. Get it through and up around another bead end. Snug that down, grab another seed bead, come up through the seed bead again, and snug that seed bead down into your bead end. Put my needle back on and I'm gonna basically sew it on. Back and forth, up through the seed bead. You can even use one of the outer seed beads as an anchor. Like you can come down the side, side of the seed bead, go down, a couple 
the seed beads and then come up the other seed beads. Now give it some extra security as well. My needle came off. So I'm going to snip it there. Yeah, so for some extra security, you can incorporate some of the outer seed beads in your sewing. I'm going to glue those knots with this GS Hypo Cement. You can buy this off Amazon or get it from Hobby Lobby. But I go in here and I put a nice drop on my knots here. And that'll be contained within the bead end. I like the, the nice fine tip to this pinpoint precision, they call it. You don't even have to squeeze the tube. All right, now I just let that sit a second before I move on. Next, I'm gonna grab a couple split rings and I also grabbed a lobster clasp and some extender chain. When your glue's pretty dry, you can take some pliers and squeeze your bead end together. This type I happen to get off Amazon and it has two little loops on the end here. And that's where I'm going to feed on my split rings. So you just got to open up your split ring. Put your two loops on there and close them up. So the other side. The links on my extender chain open up, so I'm going to do that. One side done. Got to open the split ring up again for our lobster clasp. Now we're on there. These necklaces are so unique. I really like them. They're very soft and malleable and you can hang whatever you want off of them. I grabbed this carnelian because it just happens to be July. You can color coordinate your necklace with your wire wrap pieces. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for sticking around. Welcome to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you made it this far, let me know in the comments so I can personally thank you. As always, the biggest way you can support my channel is by watching all the way through. Another way you can support my channel is to just keep on watching. So check out this next video I have for you. Have a great week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!